greetings, and welcome to a new day in the streaming and TV box community. Today is a good day, because today due to your continuous support and subscribing to my channel, I would like to welcome my very first TV box from the sellers over at Banggood.com, one of the top online retail stores and sellers of TV boxes and accessories. For today's video, they have sent the H96 Mini All-Winner H6 Quad-Core 6K TV box. Banggood fully understands and support what we do on this channel, and my videos will as always remain factual and critical in spite of having been sent for review. So up next, I have a full review and demonstration, and let's see what the H96 Mini has to offer. So stay tuned, that's right after the break. Welcome back, and thanks for staying with us. The box doesn't have much information about its hardware specs, only to show that it has 6K HDR video playback capability. And with that said, I will do a quick unboxing. In the box you have your standard contents. You have the TV box itself. An infrared remote control. 1 HDMI cable, a 5 volts 2 amps power adapter, and a user's manual. And now a look at its design and ports. The body is made of plastic, with the H96 Mini logo printed to the top. To the rear you have 1 HDMI port, 1 Ethernet LAN port, 1 audio video port, and a DC power input jack. To one side you have a USB 3.0 port and one USB 2.0. To the other side you have some cooling vents. To the front, you have an LED power light. And below the box you have lots of cooling vents. I will now connect it to a 4K TV and capture card and continue. So I'm all set and ready for the first boot up process. And as I start up for the first time, I am greeted by a boot up animation for a few seconds. Then you are taken directly to the launcher with no quick startup wizard. So this is the launcher. It has a similar design to the box in my last video, consisting of these large main buttons that cannot be changed, and a shortcuts bar at the bottom. To the top here you have a one-click cleanup feature for killing apps running in the background and freeing up system resources. The launcher does not come with a navigation bar or status bar for easy navigation with mouse pointers, so I will install the menu button app and snowball app as alternatives in a moment. Features of this firmware include 4K display resolution up to 2160p at 60Hz, HDR display settings, an audio format and audio pass-through options. That's all the special settings I can find, along with the rest of the standard Android system settings. I will test for Dolby Atmos and DTS Audio to see if they are enabled by default later in the video. In the apps section, they have included AirPin Pro, APK Pure, Chrome Browser, KD Player, Miracast Receiver, Mobdro, Netflix, the Google Play Store, Amazon Prime Video, Showbox, the VLC Player and the Android TV version of YouTube. I will quickly install my usual set of apps needed to complete my review and continue. So I'm back, and there's a situation I would like to bring to your attention concerning the box's temperature. With the box running in an idle state, the normal operating temperature is around 70 degrees Celsius, and this is a bit hot given that this box is currently running in air-conditioned settings. So I highly recommend that active cooling be applied to this box which will add to the box's lifespan. Active cooling meaning a mini cooling fan of some sorts placed below the box. I will pause for a second and apply a mini cooling fan, and return with the results. So I'm back, and with a cooling fan placed below the box, temperatures has dropped from 70 degrees to 40 degrees Celsius in idle state. This is a big drop by 30 degrees and it means that the all-winner manufacturers have not included adequate heatsinks on the CPU and GPU. Instead of providing more cooling to curtail overheating, they opt into lowering the CPU clock speed which I will show in a moment. A link to this cooling fan can be found in the description area. To begin the first segment I will first check to see if the box is rooted. The Root Checker app shows that the box is rooted, running on Android 9 operating system. This is great news for apps that require root permissions to work, such as keymapping apps and casting apps. 
At the same time it does not augur well for apps that require the box not to be rooted, and this box does not have a root switch feature. Next, I show its DRM information. It shows that the H96 Mini has Google Widevine Level 3 with no HDCP protection. This is the case for most TV boxes, as it limits the use of Netflix and Amazon Prime Video to basic 480p quality. Only boxes running on the Android TV version of the operating system, with Widevine Level 1 and HDCP protection can play Netflix in HD and 4K quality. And now as always I show its system and hardware information. The manufacturer of this box is Allwinner, and the model is the H96 Mini. It comes with 4GB of RAM which is DDR3 memory, and this is the remainder of the storage from the 128GB after the Android installation and apps installed. The Bluetooth version here is 4.0, indicated by the 4 plus below here. The CPU which is the 2018 Allwinner H6, is a 64-bit Cortex-A53 quad-core CPU running up to 1.4 GHz in 32-bit mode. Below here it shows that the box has support for only 32-bit ABIs, allowing it to run only 32-bit applications. As mentioned earlier, they lowered the CPU clock speed to curtail the heat situation on the box. The GPU is the 2018 dual-core Mali 720 graphics processor, with a refresh rate of 60Hz and OpenGLES version 3.1 which is not good for gaming in 2020. And I will touch on that later in the review. Under network, it shows that the box has dual-band 2.4 and 5GHz Wi-Fi support. Under Android information, it shows that the operating system is Android 9 Pi, and it also shows that the box is rooted. Under thermal information, it shows that the box is currently running between 40 to 55 degrees Celsius when a cooling fan is applied. Without additional cooling this can rise above 70 degrees which is not healthy for this box. The box comes with codecs needed for the playback of 4K videos with digital audio formats. And that's it for system and hardware information, and now let's take a look at its benchmarks. First I have the results from the A1 SD Bench app that measures memory and internal storage read and write speeds. The results show that the H96 Mini has a RAM copy speed of 2780 MB per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 135 MB per second and a write speed of 122. These results are a bit lower than what is recorded from recent boxes. Next, I have the results of the Wi-Fi and LAN speed test. The results show that the H96 Mini was able to hit the maximum download and upload speed of my internet package of 100 megabits per second only on the 5 GHz Wi-Fi band. The 2.4 band fell below by 57%, and the LAN port maxed lower by 30%. So for the best internet speed use the 5 GHz band. Next, I show the results of the Antutu benchmark. The latest Antutu version 8 is not compatible with this box, because it's only compatible with boxes that has OpenGLES 3.2 support. So instead I ran version 7 that is still compatible with OpenGL 3.1. The H96 Mini got a score of 50822. This is not a bad score, but it is lower than the S905X2 line. Next is the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark. The box got a score of 621 single-core, and 1566 multi-core. These scores are also not too bad for this box, just slightly lower than S905X2 boxes due to the lower CPU clock speed. The final benchmark is the TreatyMark Gamers benchmark. The H96 Mini got a score of 4223 in the Ice Storm Extreme test, and 142 in the Slingshot test. These are OK scores, but due to lower GPU compatibility, certain games will not run well on this box. So after entering the scores on the new chart, I still haven't crossed 10 boxes for the year as yet, but it gives you a good comparison of how it matches up to an Mlogic X2 and X3 TV box. You can view this chart in full spreadsheet format where you can interact with it and compare scores, see the link in the description area. To start the entertainment segment I will first check to see if alternative launchers work on this box. As usual I installed the ADW Launcher 2 which is a popular compatible alternative launcher for Android 9 operating system, and it works perfectly with all features working.
Next, I check the screen rotation feature. For persons interested in using this box for vertical screens, this feature does not work on this box. Moving on to its streaming features. Most important on any TV box is the ability to stream movies and TV shows from both paid and free services. Most popular among the paid services is Netflix and Amazon Prime Video. These apps come pre-installed on the box, and they work by entering your existing account information. The challenge with running these premium services on most Android boxes is that they lack the required digital rights and security clearance to show in resolutions above 480p quality. The picture is still very clear and watchable, but you don't get HD or 4K quality. The most popular form of video streams on any Android device is YouTube. The concern most users have on TV boxes is its ability to play in 4K quality. The H96 Mini comes with the Android TV version of YouTube, because it's the only version that can play in 4K quality on a TV box, along with the smart YouTube TV version. So the Android TV version comes pre-installed and it plays up to 4K quality. The same problem exists from in my last video, where you have to update the text-to-speech app on the box to stop the Google Assistant from speaking while using the YouTube app. Another popular form of entertainment on TV boxes is the playback of video stored on external storage devices. This feature is the second most demanded feature on TV boxes, as it gives the user the ability to play self-hosted videos on their TVs in 4K Ultra HD quality. However, not all boxes can do this successfully. The H96 Mini claims that it can play videos up to 6K quality, so let's see if this is the case as I now play my list of 4K videos and a new 6K video. And only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico. But the head-to-head -head goal difference is what counts in the case of a tie on points. The mosaic of the Camp Nou and the Barcelona hymn being sung as referee Mateo Loof prizing...
and now a go at a 6K video. So what you just saw was the 4K videos playing OK on the internal video player. The same 4K videos did not play well on the VLC player that usually plays everything. The 6K video cannot play in the internal player as it cannot recognize the file type which is MKV. The VLC player attempted to play it but only sound could be rendered. So the claim about 6K videos is not actually true. I will now test for HDMI Dolby Atmos and DTS audio pass-through. execution So this test shows that the H96 Mini does not have Dolby Atmos and DTS audio pass-through. I will now play some Android games and test for keymapping capability. The joy of cup football is you really can't predict what's going to happen. Maybe the same these days about the league games because the sense of competition is so good. But in the cup, it's not always about performance. It is all about results. Yeah, and I think there are some players, certain characters that can handle Cup competitions better, it suits them more. I just wonder which side. And he strikes a goal off the post. We don't have much time. My arrival made the evening news. I will commence decoding sequence. Keep me posted. The games that I managed to play played okay, but some of the big name titles are not compatible with this box. In one of the games I experienced some throttling, but the others played fine. Remember I am using a cooling fan so I expect that without it there would be a lot more throttling. Keymapping worked fine, and I am a bit surprised that the box was able to hold it together as I was expecting worse. In summary, in comparison to my last Allwinner H6 video, it shows that the Allwinner manufacturers are still not installing adequate heatsinks on their chipsets, resulting in temperatures soaring above 70 degrees Celsius in idle state. As for my user experience with the interface, it was quite okay. Not much to complain about, but this is not a high-end TV box. 
The 128GB of internal storage is impressive, but with a CPU clocked at 1.4GHz, and a GPU that only has OpenGLES 3.1, it is a bit dated and should be used only for streaming movies and TV shows, as it has no issues in that department. 4K video playback was okay, but this box does not output Dolby Atmos or DTS audio. I am not recommending this box for gaming unless you have a cooling fan to quell the overheating. Even so, you are limited to games that only support OpenGLES 3.1. So I am not saying that it is a bad box, but it falls into the budget category. I have come to the end of my review. I would like to thank Banggood.com for sending this box for today's review as it was one of the boxes on my bucket list from 2019, and I also wanted to see what progress was made by the Allwinner manufacturers. So I encourage anyone interested in this box to use their links provided in the description area, as to support this channel and to encourage the sending of more boxes for review. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your continued support of this channel, remember to like and share my videos, and most importantly click the subscribe button and the notifications bell to be notified of upcoming videos and giveaways. Keep the streaming community alive, and see you in the next one.